Hi YouTube, it's Tracy from Entrepreneur Girl and today is Tracy's Tuesday Tips and we are going to be covering how to add consignment to your eBay and Amazon business. Now last week we talked about what consignment was, the pros and cons to it, and I gave you some examples of people that were doing it. So this week is going to be geared more towards are you ready to be moving forward to with it, how to do that, and the tips that I have for you um, in the process. Also, I'm gonna be sharing my client agreement with you so that you can kind of uh, use it or you can take bits and pieces of it and make it your own. So I hope today's video is gonna be really helpful to you. If it is, please thumbs up down below. Let me know that you like this kind of content. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section down below. And as always, at the end of the video, please take a moment and click that subscribe button because it really does help me out a lot. So thank you and here we go. So now you've decided that you want to explore consignment. So the first step in a consignment business is deciding what you want to do <laughs> and how you want your business to run. So you can always fine tune, you can always change things as you grow and as your business evolves, but it's a good idea to have a very clear picture here when we're starting. So the first thing you want to do is ask yourself questions. Number one, what price points are you going to deal with? We talked about in the video that we don't want to be dealing with a lot of little inexpensive things that we're not going to be making any money money on so what will be worth your time um, you know that's really up to you I don't want to tell you what to do I'm just gonna tell you what I do and then you can make your own decisions from there so I really don't want to sell anything that's under about the $50 mark uh, normally just for myself I try to be above the $20 mark listed value but when I'm splitting it 50 50 with someone else now I really need to be above that $50 mark also, I don't deal with any commission that is under 50%. Other sellers will do it for 30%. Some want 75%. So again, you have to make your own decision on that. But I estimate that it's going to take anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes per item, including the research and cleaning it, you know, taking pictures if I need to, I have to work on the listing, and if there's any shipping involved or shipping prep. So, you know, I want my hourly rate to be worth it. The second thing is what kind of items are you gonna work with? You know, do you want to deal with glass? You know how much I hate glass, but there's other things too, like large, bulky, heavy items. Are you comfortable selling electronics? What about car parts that you don't know anything about? Do you like listing clothes? You know, so you want to take a moment and think through this so you have an idea of what types of items you're willing to work with. Number three, how much storage space do you have? Are you in this little tiny apartment or do you have like this huge empty garage space that you can be using for this business? So if you're dealing with Amazon, of course you can be utilizing FBA and the Amazon warehouse and you can send all of the possessions you know, there to uh, the warehouse and you don't have to worry about that. But if you're dealing with eBay or if you're merchant fulfilled, then you will have possession of the item that you take in and you have to be mindful of that because you have it until, it's, until it sells. So that could be months. Uh, number four, how are you gonna keep track of those sales? Uh, remember, these items are going to be in your account and um, if it's through eBay, it's also gonna you know, be getting paid through your PayPal account and you're gonna need to present the client with some form of accounting, whether that's pen and paper or GoDaddy, uh, you know, program, or if you're just doing an Excel spreadsheet, you need to be able to keep track of the Amazon sales, the eBay sales, the Etsy sales, however you're doing it, and whatever program you're using, you're gonna to want to present that and how the money um, is flowing. So not only for them, your client, but also for tax purposes. The fifth thing is how are you going to pay your clients? So are you going to use PayPal and transfer it? or you're going to send them a check. 
Um, how often are you going to be paying them? Is it going to be once a week, once a month? You know, what is the expectation there? So be sure to pay in a way that you can be tracked. You know, don't give anybody cash and they say, oh, well, they never got it. Um, you know, for tax purposes and just for good record keeping and to keep everybody accountable, you really need to have a consistent system that you're using. Number six, for any questions that you have uh, about taxes on consignment, you really need to contact some type of financial professional, such as an accountant. Um, consignments is not a new concept. You know, it's been around for a really long time. Think about all your consignment stores locally. But you might have questions about how it's different from selling items yourself. So this is um, what you need to be thinking about. I'm going to tell you now how I set it up. I told you I've been doing consignment off and on since I started this whole e-commerce thing. So I will take clients for both eBay and Amazon, but I'm very picky now. I make it well worth my time, and if it presents itself, wonderful. If it doesn't, I just move on with retail arbitrage and online arbitrage and all the other things we have access to. But if I do take on a consignment client, I do have some healthy parameters and this is what they are. The first thing is I will do eBay and Amazon or Etsy if there's anything specific that they have. Like if I'm dealing with a homemade jewelry client, then of course the best platform would be Etsy. So I do take that into consideration. Number two, the shipping. You know how I hate glass. If it's a really heavy item that I'm going to have to crate ship, um, I'm really hesitant to take anything that I eyeball as difficult. And you know what I mean by that? Like you can just tell if something is big, bulky, long, heavy, breakable. Um, if you're worried about it in shipping, then you really need to take pause and make sure that the product is worth selling. Number three, do I know about it? I really make sure if it's, if it's a niche that... You know, I might need to educate myself a little bit. That's fine. If we're talking about something I've never dealt with that I feel like there might be a lot of complex questions about, like if I was dealing with some type of scientific um, equipment, you know, I would not feel qualified to sell that and I would most likely decline because I'm not going to be able to even fake it. You know, like I can't answer those questions. I can't tell if it works. I might be able to figure out how to turn it on. But aside from that, I'm pretty useless. And so I, I, that's an uncomfortable position to be in. And it's also a risky one because I won't be able to talk to the clients, um, you know, or any field any questions about the product. I won't even be knowledgeable about what I'm selling or if it even works. So I, you know, just be mindful of that. Number four, is it authentic? I do not like to deal with designer handbags. I've just had really bad luck uh, with the strictness of you know trying to sell those online because they're really cracking down on fakes and they expect receipts and even when I provided receipts they have still declined me so I'm just hesitant to do that and that's one of the first things I get approached to sell it seems like is designer handbags but for me I've just you know decided to stay away from things that uh, you know is hard to prove its authenticity um, you know that goes along with designer items or anything that you're not approved to sell in if you're not approved to sell in um, you know some form of category like say a food category or a health and beauty category and you have someone that's approaching you with those types of items well then obviously you can't take it on because you can't sell it so that would also uh, fit into that um, the next thing is I make it worth my time I used to take on clients and you know with just about any product and I do not do that anymore it really was a waste of time I've learned a lot so I guess it wasn't a waste in that way but uh, now I'm very picky so unless it's good items brand new items um, expensive items something that I can list quickly that I'm knowledgeable about that I feel like I'm gonna make a good margin on for both me and my client then I really don't like to mess with it so have everyone ask, how much do I charge? I